Oh yeah, this looks like the spot. You string a line from this one to here. So I've got a ridge line and drape my canvas tarp over that. I've got a canvas bedroll to sleep on tonight. No blanket. Well, we're going al fresco. <laughs> Cross up knot. I like to wrap it around three times. I've showed you this on the um, on bushcraft knots video, so you can check it out there. I'll put a link to it at the at the bottom in the description. But, It. That's pretty much what we were going for. So I've got part of a bed in here. Upside down Bushcraft Spain logo with the wonky stitching. So I'll put my uh, cowboy bed roll in there. Well, there's not much of it I brought really. It's uh, the sheepskin rug and the canvas. It's kind of like a plow point except it's on a ridge line. And the, the corner's tucked in. <laughs> you watch the fire while I go and get some wood. Focusing on the important stuff, obviously. Coffee. <laughs> well, I'm gradually getting more organised, but it's amazing how long it takes, really. I'm obviously not trying that hard. <laughs> I've been doing this for quite a while now, and I'm still not organised. I've got to start thinking about how I pack my bag and what what bags I use, like this kind of thing, you know, that's that's all my tea making stuff in there and it's got my knife and a little spoon in there as well for stirring coffee. But I need something like this for cooking with spices in and stuff. So I'm always forgetting oil. I bought butter this time and oil so I got it covered but I usually forget the oil. Oh, oh so I excuse all the sweatiness and that. I've had a bit of a hard day today. I had to drop a tree. It's a birch tree. It was leaning over my brother's camp and it's hung up in another birch tree and the bottom's completely rotten. So I'd rather take it down now than have it come down when we're not expecting it. And birch, yeah. Lots of spoon and bowl carving wood. Ooh. Right, well I've got to set my grill up when the fire dies down a bit. And I've got uh, four pegs banging the ground. Two at the front, two at the back to set the grill on. Because tonight we're having what are we having? Red masala pork kebabs and salad. Oh, and it looks like there's a sachet of sauce in there as well. 
Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Managed to forget my bushcraft axe. I always forget something. I think everybody does. It's a standard policy. It's just a question of what it is. And today, it's my bushcraft axe. But I brought a Sloyd axe with me, which is, you know, it's a bit more high-end, you know, super sharp. It's as sharp as my Sloyd knives. Um, yeah, I could use that to bang the stakes in, I guess. But yeah, I don't like taking it out much. So it hasn't made an appearance on a video yet. But it's the one I use for most of my spoon carving. Here it is, my baby. The other reason it don't come out is because I ain't got round to making a um, a sheath for it yet. Or whatever, whatever the axe term is. So, I've forgotten what it is. Yeah, I've just got a bit of, bit of hose pipe to go on it. Yeah, this was a fairly expensive thing. I just bought the head. I can't remember. I've had it quite a while. And I've had it a couple of years. It was uh, it was from well, it was one that Woodsman's Finest recommended. Who's uh, quite a quite an astute spoon carver. And um, yeah, the guys in the Ukraine were making it before um, before all the shit happened out there. So yeah, it's a lovely bit of kit made from bearing steel. 52-100 bearing steel. It's got a nice scoop in the back so you can get your hand in there and you can really, really sort of close up on it. I made the handle myself out of ash, so it's just perfect for what I like. I was finding the other axes, they, st they started rotating in my hand once my hand started getting a bit tired after about two spoons. So I've made this one very faceted, it's sort of octagonal with larger flats on the side and um, it just works beautifully. It's fatter here which gives me even more control on the angle so yeah I just love it. You're lucky to get to see this. It really comes out of the workshop. Well I think we're about ready. Gonna be easy. <laughs> ah, putting the wrong end. Yeah, still on keto, obviously. With protein and fats. Smidgen of cashews. I've already ate a good handful of them. in a lot of it. I think we're just going to put it on the plate. Yeah, we'll leave the other two. Right, I've got to give a couple of shout outs before I eat my tea. I want to give a mention to Badger and the Woodsman. He's uh, challenged me to a one day bow at a hazel. So uh, he's shot a target from seven yards, so I've got to beat it. So we'll see what we can do. But yeah, he's all into bows at the moment. So yeah, take him, give him a look. Uh, it's Badger and the Woodsman. And the other guy, guy is Radar Base. I'd like to give him a mention as well. He's, he's got a fantastic channel and doesn't get many views. He's in Newfoundland in Canada and he's got Fantastic scenery. It just baffles me. It just baffles me why nobody's looking at his channel. And he's got some great content as well. So yeah, take a look at them two people. See what you think. Oh yeah, that's all right. A cocoa and off to bed I guess. Yeah, I know, cocoa's got sugar in it, but what are you going to do? I do like my cocoa in the woods. Got a few little treats, haven't you? Yeah, well, I'm going to keep doing some research and um, take a few notes.
and we'll see you in the morning. Yeah, morning. I suppose I'd better be getting up. Half past six. Oh, the fire's still in, so yeah. Shouldn't take long to get a coffee. So what have we got today? Bolivia Arcangel from an anaerobic washed red couture. Think a chocolate malted milkshake. It's super creamy with a subtle malty sweetness mixed with milk chocolate. A hint of chocolate orange only adds to the great balance of this coffee. Well, so mainly chocolate see, can we get chocolate? Yeah, chocolatey. Chocolate coffee. Mocha. We're having some kind of chilli. So there's mints in here, half a pepper, two mushrooms, half an onion, half of a hot pepper. And I'm gonna have oh smoked out half a tin of chopped tomatoes and half a tin of beans. That's, that's it really. I mean I was gonna have salad with it but I think it's gonna be too much. So I'm just gonna have it on its own. Very chilly. Put it on with some more spice actually, but better than being too hot. Well, I'm going to be having an early one tonight. I got very little sleep last night, and I'm knackered. I've had a really busy day. Chainsaw decided to stop working, so I had to abort the bowl horse. I'll have to do that another time. You can't can't do that without a chainsaw, really. So uh, I started started working on a bowl, mate, and carved a cuxa. But it's been so hot today. I've, I think I've drank a gallon of water, and I still feel dehydrated. So. Going to light the uh, paraffin lamp. And I'm going to let the fire go out because I don't need it for. But I like to have a little bit of light on. So, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Well, having me morning coffee. Didn't bother lighting the fire, I just did it on the mess stove. As uh, I'll be heading off fairly soon, I think. So I'm going to take the tarp down and um, hang out my bed in on the uh, on the line there, on the ridge line. Let it air a little bit. Not that I've got much to air, but it's just me um, sheepskin rug and a little thin blanket underneath. But yeah, been plenty warm enough. So yeah, it works fine. I think I'm, I'm guilty of uh, bringing far too much stuff usually. Not we all. <laughs> right, so I'll pack up and then uh, get back to you. Things never seem so bad once the tarp's down. Everything looks less of a muddle and easier to pack up, I find.
Gradually getting more organised. Things have their places now. But yeah, still a long way to go. But having these omni pouches on the side really helps. Gives me more little areas to put the little things. Like the little pouches and stuff, you know. That's it then, we're all packed up. Just got to take the ridge line down. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.